Good morning, this is Ron Brown. It is the 19th of June, 2021. I'm going to uh, take a look at the uh, markets, uh, and uh, they weren't uh, very positive this week, as we know. But there are always uh, some areas of strength and uh, some areas of weakness, and uh, I'm going to get into that. Also, I'm going to go through one of the Kirkpatrick groups, the bargain group, uh, show you how I update that. But uh, before I get too far, I want to uh, uh, tell you, all of you members of the Insider Club, I want you to uh, do some deleting and uh, before you uh, install the add-on because, as always, I've made some modifications and changes. I want you to bring up uh, the warehouse, click on the filters, Go to Ron Brown, select Delete, get rid of the filters. I'm not going to do that now, but uh, I want you to do it. On the uh, choose, click on Choose Create View on the warehouse. Select Ron Brown, click on Delete. Do the same thing for the combo rankings. I haven't changed the combos, but I like to. Uh, delete everything and make sure everything is connected. Click on delete and then the charts uh, I don't remember if I made any modifications this week or not but it it never hurts to click on the choose create view click on my name then select delete and after you've done all that of course if you're a newbie you may not know this, but you go under Preferences. First of all, you download the add-on. I will send the link with this video. You locate the add-on and you install the add-on. And then you'll have uh, everything that I have. It's identical. So if you're following along on this video, uh, you won't uh, uh, suddenly find that uh, yours, your information differs from mine. Now, I have you delete everything because... Uh, over time, if you didn't, because I uh, make so many changes, you would have duplicates or uh, views, filters, and combos, and charts that really don't belong uh, in the uh, program anymore. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. It, uh, it was a brutal week. I want to, uh, I'll take a quick look at the market, so I'll just... Uh, go into my market analysis uh, user groups. When you download the add-on, you will have these. And I'll just go to Major Markets Plus, click through to that. And then I go to my quick pick. I go to the top-down process views for major market analysis. Click on that. And then I'm going to enlarge the scorecard. But before I do that, I want to point out... Um, that uh, this is my standard layout. I'm using a weekly chart and a daily chart. The charts that I currently have up here are under the my frequently used charts. I'm using 1A and 2. This is the daily and this this is a daily, this is a weekly version. And the reason I'm doing this is uh, I am uh, I've mentioned fractal before, and fractal uh, really just means that uh, uh, stocks, if you look at a daily chart, the five days with the daily chart are represented in the weekly chart. And this is my anchor chart over here. I look for trends with the anchor chart and then signals on the daily chart. Now, I don't necessarily use just a, a blank daily chart, but you can. Because we have what we're looking for are higher highs and higher lows. So here's a higher low compared to here after the higher high. And it really isn't established uh, until this breaks through this area. But it did that. So this is a higher low. This low here is higher than this low because it broke past uh, this resistance area here. And this is an inexpensive stock, but it's trending. And you can look over here at the weekly chart. You can see a series of higher lows and higher highs. A little bit sloppier because of the uh, range. But uh, anyway, this is my setup. And then I'll bring other charts 
in here uh, for my analysis. So let's sort on uh, raw combo. And I'll just put this full size up here. And you can see that the percentage price change one day. Uh, the Ultra VIX short term futures were up the most at 13.1. Uh, yesterday was triple witching, and uh, there, were a lot, there was expiration on a lot of single stock futures. I never uh, look at those, I don't know much about them. But all of this affected the market. But it, it's been a weak market all, all week. Let me bring up a chart from Thinkorswim that I use. Now, this is a five day chart. You can see the lines here broken into 15 minutes and this is advancing issues uh, for the NASDAQ and this is for the N NYSE every 15 minutes and going back to this and that was uh, uh, let's see Wednesday Tuesday this is Monday here you can see that uh, started out strong on the advancers versus decliners and then it uh, uh, went negative and it's been negative most of the week now on uh, Thursday let's see Friday Thursday we had that uh, big up move in the tech stocks bargain hunters came in and you can see that uh, the advancing issues versus the declining issues spiked but down here on the NYSE the breadth uh, remained negative so uh, it's a very narrow market right now and uh, you need to be extremely careful so that's five days. You can see how it closed the last 15 minutes. Uh, not good. If you look at this uh, candle here, it was extremely weak. Okay, let's, so let's take a look at this. So consequently, the VIX was high. Uh, the TLT with a potential interest rate rise uh, moving up. Gasoline. You can see a series of higher highs and higher lows. I should bring the weekly chart into play here. Let me do that. You can see how this sold off. Uh, this is during the uh, uh, last March when everything was collapsing during the pandemic. And it moved up. And it uh, took several weeks to break past this to form this higher low. Uh, sorry, I hit the wrong button. Okay, I want to make this a line. And when it broke out of this area, this higher low was established over this. And it pretty much shot straight up. Now it's working on a low here, and it actually broke past that. So there's a higher low. This is gasoline, as we all know. Uh, gasoline prices are very high now. Now this chart's a little bit looser. This is the uh, ETF, but you can see a low here, a low here, a low here. Whenever it breaks past the highs, it forms a lower high. Now here's a low. Like I said, it's uh, it's sloppier, but uh, trending up, no question about it. Commodity GSG, similar pattern, oil fund. Similar pattern. Uh, this is the ARC. I put the ARC funds in here because there's so much interest in them. Uh, it did extremely well coming off of the uh, bottom in March. And then there's been a correction. And now they're starting to move up again. You can see several positive VPA flags. No supply, no supply, no supply, no supply. There was, you know, some resistance here as this base sideways, but now it's uh, breaking out. So here, this would be your low. And until, here's your higher low right here because it's broken past resistance. So now on the daily chart, it's trending up. On the weekly chart, uh, it would still be trending down. It's going to have to take this out. But that's clear up at uh, 160. So that's being kind of late to the party. It's, uh, you know, th this, uh, this is the ARKW. And uh, let's go down to the ARKK, which uh, is the one that's probably most 
widely followed. And if you look over here at the 90-day moving average volume, you can see that 12, almost 13 million shares traded yesterday of this. Uh, the prior ETF, uh, 1.6 million shares. So this is where the activity is. And uh, this stock, too, is starting to trend up, or this ETF is trending up now on the uh, daily chart after finding a bottom here. Now, this is interesting. Uh, this uh, is stopping volume. It stopped for a day. More stopping volume as bargain hunters came in. And then here was at the low stopping volume again on the VPA. And then uh, no supplier strength scene returning. I'm sorry. Strength scene returning. A no supply. Low volume test. Effort to rise. Uh, so good VPA flags here. Now let me drop down here. I'll go to number 10 because uh, it uses uh, the indicators that I'm using most. And what I'm looking for, make this an arrow again, VPOC or volume point of control crossovers on the 1010 happen clear down here at the bottom. And then I'm looking for a three and six day crossover and ultimately a six and 18 day uh, crossover. And uh, you can see as the as it started trending, it uh, these kicked in. Now there was a pullback here on the 3 and 16 and also on the VPOC but just that was a one day pullback and then uh, money started coming into it again so this is what I like about HCSI I can just flip from chart to chart to get a different perspective on all of these or on an a, a ETF for security so there is some strength and this uh, this corresponds to the uh, to that uh, view that I showed you from Thinkorswim. Let me see if I can zoom out on this or just move over. Right here when we were getting these uh, sharp bars or the AD moving up on the 15 minute bar, uh, there was, you know, there was a, a lot of uh, interest in, in the tech stocks and this fund is uh, heavily weighted into that. So after the pullback, it, uh, well, I'm doing this on a daily basis here. So anyway, through here, a little pullback here, but the three stayed above the six, and it's trending up now. So where's the weakness? Bitcoin. I don't have Bitcoin. We don't have HGSI or Bitcoin and HGSI, but uh, you can see that Riot, which uh, uh, often trades along, uh, with Bitcoin because uh, they're related. That's where the weakness was. Uh, the semiconductors uh, were weak yesterday in spite of NVIDIA, which had a uh, uh, an upgrade and has been extremely strong the past few days. Uh, the overall uh, SOX market uh, was weak yesterday. Let's take a look at NVIDIA while I'm in here. Uh, there was some selling that came into it yesterday, and you can see there's a VPA flag here, several of them. Warning, this is where the herd gets in. Chasing it by the herd, I mean the masses that see that a stock is, uh, is moving up and they just can't stand it, or the shorts have covered and they're exhausted, and then you start seeing VPA flags like this. Now, I've clicked on this, and if you read across here, an upthrust after a move, a sure sign of weakness. The upthrust at very high volume. Look at that volume. Uh, confirms weakness. Effort to move up has failed. There was an effort to move up there. Uh, bearish sign, a down bar after an upthrust. Confirms weakness. Reached a new recent high but failed to hold. Reached a new recent high and higher volume but failed to hold. All of those VPA flags are stacked right here. And um, it was chased up to, oh, let's see, what was the high for the day? Um, 775, and it closed at uh, 745. So a lot of money, a lot of money changed hands yesterday. And it uh, uh, actually a lot of pain for those who chase it or 
cover the shorts and uh, and then uh, saw it drop. Let's look at one more that uh, was a big mover past couple of days. Uh, Roku. Uh, this stock is if if we look at it uh, with the the trends. Okay, let's make this. Let me make this a line again. So he, here's where it was at its uh, highest, and it formed a low here. And then when this was broken, it formed a lower low here. And when that was broken, it formed a lower low here. And so there's your low, and then it rallied, formed a lower low here but notice it didn't form a higher low here so this stock is finding a bottom now now i'm finding okay I, i'm going to do this here this is a low here and uh, it took out this high here so it's really starting to trend on the daily now you can see that there was a pocket pivot vpoc has been bouncing all over the place very volatile, expensive stock, but it now it seems to be starting to trend. Roku has been doing very well. Now looking over here at the uh, uh, monthly chart, I'm sorry, the weekly chart. You can see it. Heard got in here at the top, and uh, then it formed a low here, lower high. Now it found support here. It's really got to take this high out here on the weekly chart uh, to be trending again. Right now it's just uh, consolidating or it, uh, it went from uh, expansion to the downside to uh, contraction. We're getting some uh, VPA flags though signaling this stock may want to go higher. Now I don't want to get bogged down in this. You can uh, uh, do this on your own. Uh, I think it's uh, better to look at charts personally like this and get a feel for them. What I want to do is I want to show you some other things here. I'm just going to uh, go back up to my plain chart here. Uh, one thing that, uh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. One place you should always look, and Paul Reiki is very good about doing this, Going to hit my alternate space bar. Go to all securities. I want to uh, go down here, and there is a folder called stocks and groups moving up and down. And I'm going to click on that. You can see that there are a hundred securities there. Before I go any further, I was looking around the other day, and uh, this is from Gil Morales, who uses HGSI. And uh, this was dated from uh, June 2018, so it's three years old. Secrets of the Gilmo. I've been doing this for 28 years, and the best daily screen I've ever seen included in any software analytics service anywhere is far and away the Woodward and Brown stocks and groups moving to the upside on HCS Investor software. Now, I put this together many years ago, and um, the way... My, my thinking was that, uh, you know, why, why look at the whole market? I want to see groups of stocks uh, that are moving either up or down. And I want to uh, just have a good snapshot of it. So uh, this is from yesterday. I'm sorted on raw combo. And my sort is uh, the industry... Percentage price change one day. And let's just take a look at this. You can see that I sort on the combo ranking is industry percentage price change one day. And what it does is it groups all these stocks together. Now I called it stocks and groups moving up when I did it. Uh, and not every stock is going to be up. I, I'll tell you that right now. So if if that's what you're expecting, it's, it just doesn't happen. But I just wanted to be able to get a snapshot based upon uh, this combo. And let me show you what I use. I'm going to go into the uh, smart groups here. Go to the stocks and groups moving 
to the upside right mouse click select group properties and this is a description of what it is. Securities at the top of the list are driven there by both fundamental and technical demand based upon the force index dollar volume and group movement. This is a combo driven list. The combo is the stocks and groups moving to the upside. Uh, uh, but this has changed. It's uh, I still the group is still created like that. So it really hasn't changed but my presentation has because uh, what I'm using now is after this group is created of 100 securities, uh, then it's sorted by industry percentage price change. And the reason I did that is I wanted to see the groups uh, that were moving up. And if you look at this column, it's a percentage price change. So I would get an instant view of where the strength is for the day. And this is based upon the group. Now the combo, the 100 stocks are still created uh, the way it was in the description, but my presentation is now uh, based upon uh, this combo. Another thing I like to do is I like to do a secondary sort. And uh, in this instance, I'm going to leave it sorted on industry percentage price change and I'll just... Uh, Type in percent PR price change one day and then it'll sort the stocks as with the biggest gainer. So I'll go down here to internet based services and you can see that uh, Fiverr, I believe that's how you pronounce it, is now at the top of the list. The group was up 0 0.10 and this stock uh, was up the most in the group. That's why it's now at the top of the list. Let's go back down here and uh, you can see that this is a relatively new stock because there are no VPA flags here on the weekly chart. Where are we on the daily chart? Well, this stock has taken a beating, but it uh, it's starting to trend up. And I say that because if you look at this, here's a low. Here's a higher low here because it just broke past here. I didn't get this one level, but that was the low, and now it's a higher low. On the uh, weekly chart, here's the low, and he here is a higher low. It's starting to trend high. It's an expensive stock, but uh, it's important to get a feel for the trend, and then you can start looking at other indicators. Let's go back down to chart number 10. You see the VPOC, it's based upon 10 days, is kind of all over the place. But the moving average crossovers happened back here. The 3 went up through the 6, 6 went up through the 18 here. And it went from expansion to contraction, and now it's showing expansion again as the 3 crosses up through the 6 again. Zoom in on this so you can see it. Three cross through the six again, and that was yesterday, and then it followed through two days of pocket pivots, the VPOC, two days of VPOC. So anybody who took the trade here is up for the day if they stuck with it on Friday. Now I don't want this video to be too long, so let's go through these very quickly. These are stocks and groups moving up, and I'm going to this is the intraday version of a different combo. Notice that these are not sorted by industry now. But let's go down to the stocks and groups moving up $1 to $15 end of day. And you can see the order here, the sector here. You can see if there are box stocks here. You can look at the crossover days. Very important. Uh, so here's one. Um, I haven't looked at this, but crossover on both the... Uh, uh, 13, there are the three crossing the six and the volume point of control. It's only a $4.88 stock. Let me see if I can find a nut. Wow, this is an inexpensive one too. Well, I'm in the 1 to 15, no wonder. So let's just look at this. And I will point out that uh, here's the crossover yesterday. The three crossed the six here. You can also see it up here. Let's take a look at this. 
on the weekly and the daily chart. I'm going to go back to my 1A chart. Uh, you know, th this is a sloppy chart. Uh, I wouldn't pay much attention to it because uh, you're probably going to have uh, more of this just because it's a low price stock. It's formed a higher low here. It did form a higher high when it broke past there, but it's kind of fallen back. I, I just take a look at this a stock like this and I don't do anything. I'm not interested. Let's see if I can find. But it, the signals were correct, of course. Let's find another one. Now, when you see a stock like this, Earthstone Energy. Notice the three cross the six. 16 days ago, zero being the crossover day, and the VPOC uh, crossed again yesterday. So without even looking at the chart, I can see that this stock has been a uh, trending with three above the six, but it pulled back, and this may be an opportunity uh, to get into it. Another inexpensive stock. Let's drop down here to 10. Here's your VPOC crossover. Uh, the three and the six have remained positive from this point right here. It's kind of a loose chart right here, but you can see it's trending up both on the weekly and the daily. Uh, these inexpensive stocks, uh, uh, you can expect uh, volatility, and uh, uh, that's what happens on here. Now, when I go, I'm going to go back up to this, to the other one. By the way, let me do something here. I don't want to forget about this. You can do the Spectrum Analyzer for a quick read on what's uh, what dominates this group. This is stocks and groups moving up. Smart group, uh, everything, not just the 1 to 15. This was dominated by application uh, software followed by internet-based services. Drop down here to the 1 to 15, specialty pharma, biotech. Let's go on down here to the downside. Auto parts. Look at all the red here. Banks, precious metal, banks, banks. These are the big banks up here. But you can see where the weakness was. Precious metals, biotech. This is a group that uh, had been really strong. Okay, let me go. I'm going to click on this and go to one of the precious metals. Bring this up. This group is now only 32. So, by using the stocks and groups moving to the upside and the downside, you get a real quick read on the market. Uh, uh, based on individual stocks. Now I want to finish this up, this video up by going to the, uh, the these you're going to have to make yourself if you want to follow this process. This is the, uh, these are the Kirkpatrick groups, Charlie Kirkpatrick. This is, these uh, have been in here for years, his, uh, his methodology, uh, but uh, there was really never a easy process to keep track of these and uh, I sat down and uh, figured it out. I did have a mistake in one of the filters and uh, one of the users uh, pointed that out to me so I fixed it and uh, that's why uh, we have the add-on and that's why it's easy to uh, to uh, fix things. So uh, anyway let me go into the the bargain list here. I'll take the filter off. I think my updating is still on is why that's happening. You can see that there are 40 securities and I just left uh, uh, the uh, indexes in here. Sort on this. You can see the index is right there. Uh, now to, to maintain this, and I'm going to click back through and I'll move down here to folder number 15, the Kirkpatrick Views. And these are the Kirkpatrick Fields. 
relative strength EPS rank, PSR rank, and chart pattern. And uh, like I pointed out last week, just click your F1 or your help button over here if you want to know about these. Uh, rather than me spending time, just go to help table of contacts. Type in Kirkpatrick over here. Hit the enter key and it's going to come over over here. Kirkpatrick ranks chart pattern. Uh, he does have a book called Beat the Market. Uh, Charlie's retired now, but he still uses uh, HGSI. And uh, you can uh, find out what this is all about. Anyway, he did years of research. And uh, he didn't back test it. He forward tested it. He picked a group of stocks. And, uh, and uh, he determined that relative strength is the best way to, uh, to find winners. And uh, high relative strengths, uh, he said, they're good for about a year. And... Uh, of course, you can't uh, take that at face value, but uh, they, the relative strength is uh, one of the best ways to determine how to uh, find winning stocks. And he, uh, his methodology has done very well. Now, stocks uh, come and go. They're added and subtracted all the time. This really isn't a fair test, uh, but let's... Uh, let me run this for you. Let's see. What is this uh, date? This is the 19th, so I'll go through the close on the 18th of June, and uh, we'll begin on the 19th of May. What group have I chosen? The bargain list. Let's just run this, and you can see what's what this group has done. Um, like I said, it's um, stocks come and go, so th this isn't really uh, an extremely uh, accurate way of looking at uh, what these have done. But 17.16% uh, 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 for the bargain list over the last uh, month, 34 gainers, 5 losers, and the S&P did 1.57. And you can see that uh, there are a couple of uh, expiration production near the top and um, some of these returns have been uh, really uh, spectacular now uh, where did these come and come in and um, so on that's that's the question so uh, let me do the same thing for another group here and then I'm going to come back and shorten it uh, I mean these stocks don't change that quickly as a rule so I'm going to shorten it to uh, two weeks and run through this ag again. This is the uh, growth list, 15.04 over that time period compared to 1.97. 48 and 12. You can see that uh, Zedge was up 63.9%. Uh, Let me do it for the uh, next group, value. For the month, what did it do? 11.8. And you can see this is a much uh, smaller group. You are going to have some overlap in uh, some of these uh, groups. Now, let's go back here. Do this. I'm going to change the date to... Okay, there's... Let's just do it from June... 7th through the 18th, that would be last week, or the prior week and last week. I'll just work my way backwards. This is a value group. Now, you can see how tough this has been uh, because the market's, market's been uh, rough over the past, uh, especially this past week. Uh, neither, neither one of them performed well here. Choose the group. Let's look at the growth list over that time period. Well, it, it performed a little bit better than the uh, 
S and P, but uh, you, you can. This is a, a perfect illustration of how tough it is to make market or make money in a weak market. Uh, I, I showed a whole month, and uh, that included uh, this uh, weak market. Uh, but uh, it just goes to show, like I said, uh, it, it's tough. Let's do one more. Going to uh, choose a different group, the bargain group. And let's see how it performed. Now look at this. It was actually up 1.71%, but still way down. But these stocks, and you'll find that uh, these stocks are in uh, stronger groups. Exploration and production communication has been strong. Uh, I don't think steel's been strong. Marine shipping has been good, though. There's a few marine shipping uh, stocks in here. But... Uh, uh, when the market's uh, weak, it's it's really tough to make uh, headway. So, as Ian used to say, you know, just go on vacation. Don't beat your head against the wall. I know it's, uh, I had a few spreads on yesterday, and um, uh, they were mostly profitable, and uh, suddenly they weren't. I just uh, went ahead and closed them. Uh, I'll see what happens next week, because... Uh, uh, I certainly didn't like uh, the way the uh, the week closed. So, okay, I'm going to do one more thing, and then I'm going to end this video. Going back into my designer, I'm just going to do the bargain list, but they all work the same. There are 38 stocks in here. I'm going to edit the group, and I have to locate the filter that I want to use and they're up here under my name under GIR group inclusion filters I just put them at the top to make them easy to find I'm going to click on the bargain list and I'm going to say OK and what it's doing it's going into the entire database and it's pulling up all these stocks now there are uh, lots of stocks here but it says 37 matching and I'm going to click on add you can see there's 40 in here right now including the index and now there's 47 so if I go down and look at the last seven stocks these are the ones that were just added one two three four five six sevens con US concrete was was in there now so the these have been added uh, this week and I'll say OK. I'll go ahead and generate the index. I might as well do all of these while I'm at it. Come to think of it. So I'll edit the group. So I'm going to do the gro growth group. I have to change my filter. I'm going to add. It's pulling up the entire database. And it says 59 matching. There's 61 over here. I click on add. It, it added three. So the last three have been added. I'll say OK. Go ahead and generate that. Value list. Edit the group. You can see this takes very little time. Now this is a small group. Only 30 in here. And it says only 27 matching. So I'll click on add and one was added. It went from 30 to 31. So flex steel was added to the value list. I'll click on OK. So these have all been updated. Now what I want to do is I want to get rid of the ones that no longer qualify. So I go into the bargain list. First of all, I want to make sure that uh, okay I'm on manual okay I'm on, I'm in the bargain list um, and I have to make sure that I'm okay so 
bargain list removed. Now all of these stocks that are in here need to be removed. Why do they need to be removed? Because they don't fit the criteria anymore. So if I look at the uh, bargain list remove the PSR this is what it takes to remain in here. PSR has to be between 17 and 42 with an RS rank of 97. I imagine the RS ranks have fallen below 97 and they have. You can see each one of these are below 97. So they're out of there. Now you can keep these in a different folder if you want to but they don't qualify anymore. So if I bring up the chart you can see why the RS has uh, fallen off on here because uh, the stock's been coming down. Let's let's look at uh, Nucor. Nucor was great for a long time. Here's where the herd got in on this false breakout, and look what's happened. It's it's pulled back, but these are no longer in the bargain list. So what do I do? I click through to the designer. I Go to the top one. I hold down my delete key on my keyboard. And um, I'm just going to delete these. It would go a lot faster if I closed uh, uh, everything. The charts and the warehouse. But I'll just leave them up there for now. Okay, they're gone. So if I go back to the bargain list add, I have 30, 38 securities in here right now. And uh, I didn't uh, pay attention to the ones that were added. I know Visto was added. That's one of the stocks that was added. And uh, if you look at it here, and let's use these columns right here, the days since the 3 crossed the 6, and the days since the 3 crossed down, VPOC crossover and so on. You can see the, the VPOC crossed down nine days ago and the three crossed down through the six five days ago. But we're getting an effort to rise. Strength seen returning. There are some buyers coming in here and it's gaining some support. The group's flat. VPOC is still negative. But this should go into a watch list or you should watch it on Monday if this market regains some strength and see if it holds here. Now what I like to do is I like to look here and look for the crossovers. One thing you really need to be careful about uh, with this bargain list, see, these are $10 stocks but the volume is not a requirement. So a lot of these stocks like these banks, this only trades 4,700 shares. So look over here at this column. Uh, don't waste your time looking at these stocks that don't uh, trade anything. Let's do look at Sykes Enterprises though. It trades about 220,000. Wow, well, that's a buyout or something. So that doesn't count. See if I can find anything else. The easy way to do this is to do a sort on the days since the VPOC crossover and then go down here and look for the zeros. Let's look at Laredo Petroleum Holdings. And you can see that this has been a strong stock in an uptrend, but it's been chopping around here. It went from expansion to contraction, and now it's showing some signs of support. When I buy it here, I'd, I'd wait for it to put a buy stop above all this over here because it can really get bogged down. But you can see that a lot of buyers came in here with this volume on Friday and uh, you know the fan is in an uptrend. The Kirkpatrick RS rank is 99. Uh, so that needs to go into a watch list. User groups. Watch list. New. Oh, I didn't want that. I thought I still had my 2020 20, Oh six eighteen, it's going to go in there. 
And just look for the ones with uh, recent crossovers on either the 3 or the 6 or on uh, the VPOC. And then look over at the vital and look at that one because the volume's terrible. Okay, now the VPOC crossed here, but the 3 hasn't crossed the 6 on Northern Gas. But you can see this one is trying to set up also. Look at the pocket pivots here. Look at the VPOC. The 3 hasn't crossed the 6. It's right at it though. There are several white candles here. Quick add to group. This needs to go into a watch list. Now if you want to see which stocks have uh, been uh, strong for the longest time. Look at the days since the 13 crossover and the VPOC crossover. Here's what 26 days ago on both of them. Here's what happened here. And you can see the three remained above the six. or are several pocket pivots along the way. This is where the strength has been. This is why I like these columns. The three crossing the six. And the days since the VPOC. Let's go down here to U.S. Concrete. The three crossed the six 17 days ago. The VPOC just crossed yesterday. Actually, it crossed down. I'm sorry, I was in the wrong column. Well, it's a buyout. Doesn't matter. One more, and then I'm going to end this. Uh, let's see, this is a zero. These are days down. I don't see a lot here. Let's look at at home group. Bringing the Wyckoff into account. Less than average volume, very narrow, but it closed very high. So let's take a look at this one. Well, is this a buyout too? I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, it looks like it's setting up if it's not. I'll have to uh, uh, look into this. I'm not really familiar with this stock. I'm going to add quick add to group. Uh, and then I'll take a look at it. Anyway, that's uh, all I'm going to do today. Uh, these uh, Kirkpatrick groups are a nice addition. They don't take the, the group rang into account, but they do take the relative strength in the EPS. And if you look over here, you can see that the RS on most of these is very high. It doesn't match the Kirkpatrick. Two different methodologies of ranking. Uh, the EPS ranks, uh, I think they vary a lot. Here's one that's 95 on Kirkpatrick. You just have to go in and read about how he... Uh, determines his EPS rank, but uh, this only has a 10 uh, the way we do it, which is, uh, or EHCSI does it with 40% uh, of the emphasis. No, that's incorrect. I'm, I'm thinking about the RS. So, anyway, big difference. Let's take a look here. Homeowner's Choice. EPS rank of 10 because of these inconsistent quarters. You can see them right here. And uh, uh, let's, I hate to leave you hanging. So, table of contents, Kirkpatrick. His EPS ranks a ratio of the most recent four quarters, earnings per share to the Four quarters one year earlier is calculated for each stock price with positive earnings. The entire list is ranked into percentiles from 99 to 0. So a totally diff different method. Uh, uh, but RS is really uh, the most important thing on any of these uh, stocks. And that uh, pretty much holds true for HGSI. H uh, HGSI... Uh, accounts uh, a lot. Group movement count, accounts for a lot in HGSI and that's really not a uh, factor uh, in Kirkpatrick but you have the group rankings uh, right over here so uh, that comes into play. And these are group rankings are uh, pretty much based upon the last uh, six months with 70 percent of the emphasis on the last quarter. Thanks for listening. This was a little bit lengthy but I wanted to uh, take you through this and uh, do a little chart analysis at the same time. Uh, let's see what happens next week. Uh, 
This market could continue down. It's very dangerous, as uh, we all know. Have a good week. And